Hey, this is Ralph, and in this video, we're going to keep on working on our personal finance budget in Excel. So, as you can see here, we've got our income and expense categories. We've put in some budgeted amounts, whether they're real or expected. We've also calculated their percent of total income for each income category and each expense category so we know where we might be out of line. So, for instance, if your housing is 25% uh, of your total income, that's pretty good. If it's 40 to 50% of your total income, that's pretty bad, pretty risky. Okay, so now we've got some information to work with. Let's see, we know what our total income is, we know what our total expenses are, and then we know if we're budgeted to have a gain or loss for each month. Let's see, what else can we keep track of here? Let me do a little bit of formatting. Um, I'm going to go ahead and select the cell here, kind of like that formatting, and I'll use my format painter again to format gain loss and I'd also like to keep track of my total income amounts here I'm gonna format these in a slightly different color I'm gonna light green then I'll use my format painter format total expenses oh I never really put this in let me uh, take this formula and autofill it down one more there we go I'm gonna use my uh, autofill options and I'm going to fill oh, you're not really seeing those there we go and I'm going to fill without formatting because if I just copy the cells it's going to take away that green fill that I just put in so I'm going to fill without formatting so that way my green is still there so now I can see that my expenses are about 75 percent of income and that means you can start to play around with different numbers maybe I jack up the freedom fund amount maybe I put a little bit more into the old Roth IRA maybe you pay a little bit more towards the student loan debt maybe you eat out a little bit more okay different options on there and let's see I'm also going to uh, format those cells also okay so things are looking pretty good here now let's go ahead and work a little bit up on the top part of this personal finance budget in my column C1 I'm just gonna go ahead and write in the words beginning and then I'm gonna do an alt enter beginning balance okay alt enter in Excel creates a line break within the cell okay so alt enter in Microsoft Word it's shift enter but in Excel it's alt enter so just gonna remember that one and I'm gonna go ahead and uh, line this over to the right and what I'm gonna do for the checking account is I'm gonna keep track of my checking account balance okay so I'm gonna have a starting point up here let's say it's uh, two thousand dollars okay and this would be your balance at the end of the last month okay and then let's go ahead and put in a month here let's see it is just April has started up so I'm gonna go ahead and put in um, 4-1-2011 okay I don't really want it to display that way so let me go ahead and click on this cell and I'm gonna to go to my number formatting options my format cells dialog box here and I'm gonna see I see that there's a bunch of different date categories okay March 1st so we have month and we have year there I can just do just the month or you can go to custom and you can do a couple of different things so let's so what if I did something like this oh in fact I see there's an option for me already but we could type this in we could do MMM and that would display the first three letters of the month space Y and that would give me a two-digit year or I could do four, three Y's and get a four-digit year I'll go back and just do MMM space Y for the month year combo and I'll click OK so now I can see that's April 11 now I can click on the fill handle and I can drag to the right a little bit here and then I can go to my fill options and I can choose the option to fill months so now I have April, May, June, July and August okay. I'm gonna put my cursor on the border of that selected range of cells hold my control key click and drag down let go of the mouse let go of the control key and I kinda like that so let me go ahead and copy this formatting too I'm gonna select this cell I'll use my in fact this time I'm gonna double click my format painter when you double click your format painter I can apply that formatting to one range of cells and then go and apply it to another range of cells Oh, but what just happened 
my dates got formatted as numbers, which I didn't want to do. Okay, so let me do this. I'm going to go ahead and Control Z and undo that. Press Escape to deselect that, and let me just kind of format it this way. I'll format those cells. Bold, Format Painter, select those cells. There we go. So now I've got some formatting on there. And let's see, I can also continue this amount. Now, if you recall, in my cell C7, my total budget is simply the sum of the cells right above it. And that's actually going to be good for me. I can simply take this, autofill it to the right, and now I've got those totals in there. If I scroll down a bit and I take my total expenses and autofill that to the right, I'll get the same thing. But I can also do this with gain loss. I'm going to select all three of these cells, autofill to the right. And I've got total expenses and gain loss for each of those. So I started off at the beginning of April with a beginning balance of 2000 Now throughout April, you're going to have some real income and you're going to have some real expenses. So let's see how this is going to work. So let's say April is in progress and, you know, you start to record things. So in April, let's say my net pay from job one was really $24.90. My net pay from job two was $805. And my roommate paid their share of some rent and expenses, 500 bucks. And then I put in some different amounts. Now, some things are going to be exactly what you budgeted. But something like dining out, maybe that varies. Maybe it was 307 in that month. Groceries was 219 Entertainment was 138 And then other things might be pretty static. And it's still kind of cool, so maybe you're using more gas heat. All right, and electric and garbage is pretty consistent. So now I can see that I started off with two grand. I had about thirty-seven ninety-five in total income. Had about thirty-four eleven in total expenses, which means I had a gain of three eighty-four. So my beginning balance for my next month is going to be equal to the previous month's beginning balance plus any gain and loss from that previous month. Enter. Which means going into May, my beginning balance should be 2384. Previous plus any gain. Now, if this was a loss, for instance, let's say you had a really big expense here. Uh, maybe you paid extra to your mortgage or something like that. Okay. So, if my expenses were much higher, that means I actually had a loss that month. So my beginning balance plus that loss, plus a negative, reduced my beginning balance in May. So now my beginning balance is only 384. So maybe paying that much towards the mortgage was too excessive. So I'll change it to a 2000. So I had a smaller loss. But fortunately, I had a balance in the checking account to cover it. So now I've got kind of an accurate count of what's going on. So that's a little bit of formatting with some cells. Now in the next video, let's go ahead and add up some averages and totals so we can kind of keep track of where our true, you know, where we get better estimations of what our expenses are going to be.